and then coming to, you know, these different organizations, man, and just being around you guys as players, um, show me a different aspect of how to do the job, right? Having, having what, what, the, what it means to have relationships, yeah. you know, Chris Long or James Laurinaitis or Robert Quinn, you know, or Todd Gurley, yeah. you know, Aaron Donald, like all those guys, like all you guys played a part in me getting here to this chair, right? I don't get here unless we have players like yourself that perform the way you do. Um, because, you know, realistically, teams want to draw from winning organizations, right? And so, you know, last time I checked, I'm not either scheming up plays, calling plays, or on the field executing them. You know, uh, one of my jobs is I was identifying or still is identifying the talent. Um, and then, you know, it has to, we have to have the right people. And like, like I said, guys like yourself who put in the work and, you know, laid it all out there on the field, man, you guys are part of the reason why I'm here. Congrats. Appreciate you, brother. That's so damn cool. Man, I've come a long way from Earth City and, and trash dumps. <laughs> That's what I'm saying, dude. I told George, I said, like, uh, the bathroom barbershop's doing pretty well. It is. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. And Big, uh, Big George actually, uh, his daughter had a volleyball tournament uh, here in Nashville on uh, Saturday. Yeah. Was it Saturday? No, Friday. So he came over. Um, uh, he missed the presser, but he came over to our, our family dinner on Friday. That's awesome. And then he came over to the facility on Saturday morning. And I was getting some work in, so he came and hung out with me. That's so damn cool. I bet you're getting texts from old teammates, too. That's awesome. Yeah, um, man. It's been it's been crazy love. And the coolest thing was getting, um, you know, texts from, you know, guys like yourself. And I actually ran into Kendall Langford at the game. Yeah, um, really? You know, Saturday and, you know, just even like current, like Niner players, Rams players, you know what yeah. I mean? It was just cool to get that, you know, that love from those guys. Well, you, you're respected, man. So it was awesome. Um, the, the first thing I was going to ask you about was just like taking people through people that might not have been familiar with you through the journey you took from Atlanta and also your playing background all the way through where we met in Earth City uh, and then and then beyond through San Francisco and the whole thing? You know, obviously, I, oh, well, not obviously, but I played college ball at the University of Florida. I went undrafted to the Colts, um, you know, 04, 05, 06. I say I stole three years in the league, uh, you know, bounced around. I played for, uh, what, five teams in three years. Kind of quickly knew that, you know, I, I wasn't cut out for it, but I also knew there was something else I could do. Right. And so started pursuing, trying to get in. Um, and had to hustle, you know, my way in. And yeah. so my last year, I, 06, I knew I was done playing. But that spring of 07, I just went on workouts, just taking, you know, random workouts, knowing I didn't want to play. But that was my opportunity to meet GMs and express my interest in getting into scouting. Because oh, how else was I going to, you know, meet those guys? They weren't going to probably answer my emails or, you know, me sending my resume. So, you know, a team would like, and that's how I actually met Les Snead. I went on a mini camp tryout yeah. uh, with the Falcons and I remember getting his business card. He was, hey, man, sorry, not going to sign you. And I was like, all right, cool. But, you know, can I get your business card? Because I want to do what you do one day. And so um, fast forward, I coached high school ball in Miami, 07. Go back to school, uh, the top of 08. And I remember having my agent reach out to, uh, you know, teams he had relationships with. And one of those teams was the Falcons. And then Les remembered the interaction. And so he um, he called me and was like, hey, man, probably don't have anything, but just want to interview you, just talk to you. They brought me in, was there for maybe four hours yeah. on the interview. And what, like a week or two later, he called and offered me a job as a pro scout. You know, and that kind of started my journey. And then when Les got the job in St. Louis, uh, he brought me over, hired me as hired me as his director. That was my first director job. And so that's where we met. You know, all those times in the training room, us hanging out with Byron, and Tyler, yeah. and Reggie, yeah. you know, and the shenanigans. And, Tyler, now the head guy in Minnesota. Yeah. So I still talk to all those guys like frequently. You know, so I was there for all C Long's pranks. You know, <laughs> there the, were a few the crickets and uh <laughs> no, that was um no, the, Portland, we uh, got no we cars, got the crickets. Uh, Cortland did the cars across the street yeah, and then we did yeah. the the houses out in the field. 
Yeah, uh, so I, you know, remember all those, and like you said, the bathroom barbershop. Uh-huh. <laughs> you know, yeah. So, um, you know, was with the organization when we moved to LA uh, that year. Did did my year there in LA. I don't want to make it sound like I did time in prison, but right. did my year in LA, um, and then connected with um, you know John. Um, he wanted to interview me, and you know, I interviewed there, got the job in Saint um, in San Francisco. And did uh, six great years there. And, uh, man, blessed with this opportunity I'm in now. That's so cool, man. And, you know, you've from Steve Spurrier to, you know, meeting Les and Dimitrov and just all these football minds. You've been around Shanahan, John Lynch, you know, Jeff Fisher. You know, I saw him this week. He said, hey, I'm the winningest coach in Titans history, but I think that's going to get broken uh, with this duo here of Mike Vrabel and Rand Carthen. So, like, what did it mean to hear that? And then also, like, who are your biggest influences as you do this job? You know, somebody you took something from that you're like, okay, the blueprint has been set. Man, like, to hear, you know, Coach Fish say that, like, meant a lot. Um, you know, and as if I didn't have any more pressure. Yeah. <laughs> you know, <I> mean, <laughs> he did it. He did it. He just added he to it, it, right? Yeah. But one, it's, it's one that I embrace, you yeah. know, because Fish is one of the greats. His name is up in the stadium here. Um, and to get that endorsement means a lot, you know, but I know that I got to still do the work. You yeah. know, Mike, you still have to do the work and get that done. Um, but, you know, some of my influences um, from a football perspective, like like I said, man, I've I've been blessed to be around, you know, three great organizations. <laughs> Um, you know, so I've taken things from literally every head coach, every GM yeah. you know, that I've worked with. Um, some of my influence, uh, Peyton, you know, having played those, you know, three years in uh, Indy, yeah. you know, seeing the game from a totally different aspect, you know, being able to see the whole field, what each thing means, how each moving part uh, plays a plays a part and it allows me to scout better Yeah, because now I, you know, understanding those nuances, it's not just, oh, the running back missed this block. You know, it might not have been his guy. Those are all things that I learned from Peyton and, you know, guys haven't played with guys like Edron James and, yeah. you know, Arvin and Reggie and, you know, all those great players, Tart Glenn, um, you know, Jeff Saturday, even the, you know, defensive guys, you know, Mathis and Freeney and Cato yeah. June and, and then coming to, you know, these different organizations, man, and just being around you guys as players, you um, Show me a different aspect of how to do the job, right? Having, having what, what, the, what it means to have relationships, yeah. you know, Chris Long or James Laurinaitis or Robert Quinn, you know, or Todd Gurley, yeah. you know, Aaron Donald, like all those guys, like all you guys played a part in me getting here to this chair, right? I don't get here unless we have players like yourself that perform the way you do. Um, because, you know, realistically teams want to draw from winning organizations, right? And so, you know, last time I checked, I'm not, either scheming up plays, calling plays, or on the field executing them. You know, uh, one of my jobs is I was identifying or still is identifying the talent. Um, and then, you know, it has to, we have to have the right people. And like, like I said, guys like yourself who put in the work and, you know, laid it all out there on the field, man, you guys are part of the reason why I'm here. Well, we appreciate you, man. And, and you know, when you were in San Francisco, one of the things I noticed was how, how good y'all did in late rounds, you know. Um, and I know you were a part of that. You know, like, what was it about the way y'all attacked that area of the draft that that made y'all different? So I think, the, again, it goes to, and something you'll hear us preach, preach here um, uh, with the Titans is collaboration, yeah. right? You know, you have the early rounds. You know, those are more, you know, need-based, if you will. You know, the head coach GM more heavily involved in those picks. But then those later rounds, you start to see your scouting staff and your coaching staff, you know, become more prevalent in in those picks, right? Yeah. Because, you know, that's the, the part of the roster where they're really locked in and focused on. And, you know, uh, usually those parts, those back end are where you feel your depth and try to steal some starters. And those guys are mostly really scheme specific and fit exactly what you do. Yeah. And so, um, you know, I think that's a testament to, you know, the coaches uh, that we had on staff and the scouts we had on staff in, in San Francisco, um, just working together, understanding each other, understanding what each, you know, person needs and bringing the right people up to the table. So I look forward to, you know, building that here with our assistant coaches and our scouting staff as well. You can also steal um, the last guy in the draft and he can lead you to an NFC championship uh, like the guy in San Francisco. 
How about Brock Purdy? What what did you guys see in him? And uh, and are you surprised? Not surprised. Uh, like I said, coming out, man, he was a four year starter at Iowa State. Yeah, Iowa State has a good program. They run a pro system. So you, see, it was. I don't want to say it was an easy eval, right? I mean, yeah. at the end of the day, he was the last pick in the draft. But you saw a guy that did things that you already do in your offense, right? right? So you felt like it would be an easier transition. And then all you heard about going into the school was how this guy worked, how this guy led. And I think you see all those things now in the football field, which is why, you know, the Niners are where they are. Do you think that, like, now with the way they're running college offenses – and yet in the, in the NFL, like, you know, you look at Kansas City, they have a, you know, power running attack at their disposal. They use play action. Well, maybe not this weekend, but, you know, Cincinnati's built in like a pro style kind of deal. There's a lot of pro style stuff still going on in the league. There is a jump from quarterbacking in college to the pros, maybe in some systems. How do you evaluate guys that might be in systems that are quicker, one read, maybe less to worry about? Uh, more moving parts that they have nothing to do with. How do you evaluate? Will they be able to make that jump? I mean, again, it's, it's going to always come back to, because I think no matter what, whether it's offense or defense, right, it's going to be a level of nuance coming to, you know, the NFL level that these kids haven't experienced. So I think ultimately it comes down to, you know, physical capability and do these guys work? Mm -hmm. You know, I think if you have guys that are talented, um, that are willing to put in the work like there's going to always be a learning curve and some will just hit it you know quicker than others um so you know quarterback is one of those positions where you have to put you know a lot of time a lot of effort a lot of resources in making sure you got the right people um but then again you you also see now you look in you look at our level and you start to see more college concepts yeah. you know in the place and i think that helps you know with the transition um so again it's you know it's it's some give and take on both sides um but i think it, it's becoming a not going to say a little easier for these guys to transition but a lot more college concepts are in our game now which helps those guys transition is there a physical attribute in a quarterback that you're like i got to have that that skill set. I know that it's a lot more than just the physical, but do you look at, hey, I, you know, this is my favorite type of, of skill set to project? Yeah, I mean, I like anticipatory passers. Um, you know, you, you got some guys that can, you know, you get the ball out quick. They know where the spot is. They can get it there accurately. Anticipation, accuracy. Um, I think those two attributes for a quarterback you know, may help them overcome a couple physical limitations that they may have. You don't have to have the strongest arm if you can get it out early and get it there accurately. And then just overall toughness. I mean, there's both mental and physical. Uh, playing that position, take, it, it requires a lot and it takes a, a toll on you, you know, over the course of a, you know, 18 week regular season and not even, you know, even talking about making it into the playoffs and how that goes up. And you, you know, you've experienced that a ton. Yeah know how the game changes but again you know just uh guys that are able to deliver the ball accurately on time and where it's supposed to be yeah um, and then just have some toughness and some grit to them i mean you think about the guys you've played with throughout the years man yeah. what it does for you on the on the defensive side you know when your quarterback's out there dealing and you know they're standing in the pocket strong and taking shots to get the ball there yeah. like that fires you guys up you know, and so I think it's, you know, all those things kind of help, especially at that position. No question. There's a certain type of quarterback mindset that kind of ingratiates that that player to the rest of the locker room, which is an important thing. You know, making that connection where they feel like, hey, that guy's a football player. You know, he's not a separate dude uh, that plays by different rules. He's with us. Um, do you rely on analytics? Uh, is that like a big part of your, your equation? Oh, yeah. I mean, because I feel like with analytics, um, the genesis of it, when it started becoming a thing, um, I felt like it pitted scouting and, and data against each other, right? Mm -hmm. Hardcore, old school football, you just want to watch the tape, you know, let your eyes lead you to the, to the decision. But a lot of things that we did in scouting in terms of looking up stats and what the stats meant, and, you know, it was, that is essentially analytics. Um, but now the the analytics has grown to a way where um, you can kind of get some advanced metrics, if you will, to kind of have some predictive indicators. Yeah, and so I think there's a component to it that kind of helps you with the scouting. Right, it's I think you I think you have two independent places that help drive you, you know, to the decision. 
right? So we've had, uh, you know, at the Niners, we've had some picks that were, you know, totally analytics driven that, you know, basically helped us win ball games, you know, if really? you will. And so I think there's a there's a definite place for it. And, you know, I plan on using it and helping us, you know, come to the best and most informed decision. Is there one predictive kind of trait or analytic that you think is a really strong one that you kind of hang your hat on? Well, no, I think it, it I think it becomes position specific based. Yeah. Right. And based on your scheme, uh, we had things in a way where it was specific to the scheme. So, you know, our run game in San Francisco was, you know, primarily outside zone running concept. So we were able to uh, measure uh, based on obviously the concept of guys running outside zone to the frequency of them running outside zone. And then, you know, um, you know, yards over expected, like putting all those metrics together, being able to say, you know, Chris Long was the best outside zone running, yeah. you know, back in the draft, regardless of where his grade may fit. Right. And we could see his fit for the offense. So looking forward to, you know, again, diving in with Mike and the staff. Yeah. And, uh, Cause I have to learn the system. I'm the new guy, right? This yeah. thing has been running before I got here. So looking forward to diving in, learning, uh, learning the system, learning the way that we've been doing things here and then figuring out how to, you know, um, how to merge the two and bring them together. How cool is it to have a, another former player that you got to work in concert with and how important is it to have Raves and you in concert working together? Dude, that's Mike Vrabel, man. Yeah. Like, you know, he was a, he was an animal on the field. Um, and then, like you said, man, the, the big thing is us being together. Yeah, uh, which I think is the the coolest part of it. You know, I, um, I was telling somebody this weekend. It's uh, you can you can look at us like uh, like a startup company. You yeah. know, if you will, like we're we're in this thing together. You know, it, it, it doesn't work if if we're not together because, you know, part of my job is executing his vision. You know, like I said before, I'm not drawing up plays. I'm not calling plays. Um, and so my job is to figure out what it takes to be successful in his systems yeah. and then find the, the said players that will be able to do that and execute for him. What's your favorite part of his vision? And uh, who who is it? Like, describe a Titans player, you know, like the – the, the makeup that it's going to take to be a Titans player? Well, you know, I mean, again, his his vision is, is it's been on the tape. Yeah. You know, we're going to be big, we're going to be fast, and we're going to be tough, you know. And, you know, you can look at Derek and you can look at Jeffrey Simmons. Like, those are what you want Titans to be. Yeah. You know, and I actually uh, got to meet, you know, Jeffrey earlier today. And, man, that's an impressive looking guy. Yeah, dude, he's awesome. <laughs> you know, and he's, so, he's just a bully out there. Yeah. And, you know, it, it was just awesome to meet him and yeah. just you know, just have a conversation uh, with the young fella. Um, but, man, I'm just I'm just super excited to, like, get to work. Yeah. Um, you know, got in early this morning. It's my first official day in the office, um, you know, getting the lay of the land. And everybody here has been been great from the football side to, you know, going upstairs and visiting with Burke and, you know, the folks on the business side, the social media team, you know, the ticket office. Like everybody's been great. Everybody's been welcoming. And, you know, we just want to create an environment here of inclusion um, and create that cohesion, man. We all need each other. You know, um, and, you know, if, if we're not putting a winning product on the field and the marketing and ticket side don't have anything to sell, and if they're not selling, then we don't have the money to make moves and pay mm -hmm. people do all these things. So we all need each other. And it's, you know, I could feel being in the building, you know, these last couple of days, um, you know, whether it was for the press conference or whatever, whatever have you, like everybody's like, you know, welcoming everybody's excited. So, like I said, man, I'm just ready to get to work, you know, get back to making the main thing the main thing and put my head down and figuring it all out. Last question. Uh, the accelerated hiring process program, I might be butchering the name of it, but I yeah, know it's, bit, yeah, just a little bit, Ran. <laughs> this is a podcast, you know, I'm not just a I'm <laughs> fucking journalist here. So, but, but it is, it's, it's an important, um, it's an important thing that we should be paying attention to the hiring practices in the NFL and that whole thing. And I, I think it's just pretty damn cool what you're doing. Um, and I, I, I wonder, do you think that that process could improve? Is there a way it could improve? How was working through that program? It, do I have this right? You, you're nominated by your team uh, to enter this program, and each team gets one nomination a year? 
Yeah, so the way it's the uh, it's the accelerator program. You didn't butcher it too bad. Yeah, see, he's hard fucking. Hard it's That's like we're back in the barber shop in the fucking yeah, yeah, Bowser you're back, City. You're back in the barber shop. So, <laughs> <laughs> but each team nominates uh, one front office guy, one coach. Yes. And so that's for the spring form. And then they have another form at, uh, at league meetings in the fall, uh, where you send just a front office person because obviously the coaches are working. Um, and it just gives you the opportunity to be in front of owners. They have different mixers. Uh, they do different little breakout rooms and they give you, uh, so you have a mixer where you get to spend a couple hours and just in a room full of owners, right? Um, and, and again, if, if you're being honest, like it doesn't matter if you're black or white. When you work for an organization, when are you going to ever be in a room with 30 some odd owners mm -hmm. and get a chance to present yourself? And then they have a breakfast where you get to have breakfast with, you know, with owners and you also have a lunch with owners. So that was my first uh, introduction to the Titans. I met uh, Miss Amy a couple minutes, uh, Adolfo Birch and uh, Bert Nehill. Met those guys um, there and, you know, had, you know, just a genuine, honest conversation. You know, I don't even think either of the conversations went more than seven minutes or so. Yeah. Um, but that was my introduction to them. And I think that was their introduction to me, um, which hopefully that helped, you know, spark getting, you know, my name into the pool uh, of candidates that they ended up interviewing. And, you know, I know that, uh, you know, based off of, you know, social media, you know, myself, uh, Quentin Harris, Ian Cunningham. Ian, my guy. Yeah, you played together in college. Yeah, I love um, Ian. Boyd, um, and I'm forgetting one more. And Glenn Cook, um, you know, who all were interviewed here. We all were at the Accelerator program. Yeah. Now, I don't know what their interaction was, um, you know, with the brass, but I know that all five of us were at the Accelerator program, and it's pretty cool to see that we all got an opportunity to interview here. You know, with Ian and I, you know, making it to, you know, the final round. So um, it was a cool thing to see. I definitely think the league, you know, should keep working with it. Um, there are always ways to improve it. Um, and I'll leave that up to Jonathan Bean and the crew, you know, at the at the NFL League office. But um, I feel like having that program made it made it easier for me to get uh, an opportunity to interview here. That's awesome, man. And I bet the breakfast and lunch was good because they're not eating trash. Yeah, it, was, it, was, it was it was right. <laughs> it was right, dude. <laughs> uh, Rand Carthen, new GM of the Tennessee Titans, man. I'm just so happy for you, bro. And uh, I look forward to getting out there for a game or something. Yeah, man. Just let me know. You got my number. Yeah. Uh, where's your brother, man? He was too good. No, nah, he had to go home and do like, you know, baby duty. So uh, he's one of these part-time employees. He couldn't be a Titan. He stood, he stood me up a couple of years ago, man. Yeah. Uh, I was trying to, before he signed with Casey, yeah. I was trying to get him to San Fran and, you know, we did the whole red tape thing yep. and then he pops up in KC and I was like, yeah, all right. <laughs> so, so he's I got, yeah. I got to tell him, man. I got to tell him he must be ducking you, bro. Yeah, I, I think it's, I think it's cause I'm a gator. And he's, he's <laughs> that might be it. State. Yeah. It might be. Tell, it. Kyle, tell Kyle I'm looking for him. I will. It might be his two semesters in Tallahassee. <laughs> uh. Listen to the full podcast on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and other podcast streaming platforms. Uh, wherever you want to get the podcast, you can get the podcast. Pretty simple. New episodes every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more content. Podcasts get pretty wild. This is real tame.